Hey guys, welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. And today I'm out here, it's in the evening time. Uh, I had nail trims all day and uh, then some phone calls to return for grooming and just had to, I helped Mr. Wonderful on some chores that, uh, honey-do list items that he was doing. He got the, um, the roof on the porch of the groom shop today. So super excited about that. Uh, but I'm out here. I told you last week that Missy Velvet was going to be on her last pasture in her rotational grazing. So she'd reached the end of, you know, the, the line, so to speak. I've been working down one whole side of my property and it's time to give her, you know, move her back up to the start. And so I picked all of the posts up and Mr. Wonderful was kind enough to buy me a whole box of posts, which is really cool. I love, 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 love these posts that I use. Uh, they're so much better than the old fiberglass rods that you have to pound in the ground. But anyway, um, I'm out here. I'm going to flip you around and uh, Missy Rumor has been terrified of cattle her whole life. And now she's over here trying to play with the neighbor's cows. And it's, I might have missed the moment talking to you, but it's super funny. So I'm going to flip you guys around and, uh, yeah, uh, come move fence with me because that's, that is what I'm doing today. I'm getting my rotational grazing hot wire fences set up for velvet. And then of course the sheep move behind her and hopefully this time around the chickens will be moving behind the sheep. Okay, I did miss the moment. Uh, I don't know what Missy Rumor's doing now. She's got her head down in a hole where I, that's a, um, what kind of tree is that? I planted that last year. Uh, huh. You collect the stuff from it. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, it's a maple. And uh, it's, it passed away. It perished. So I've got to pull it out, but I'm not going to pull it out until I have another tree to put in there. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to put, I'm not sure, maybe a, if you guys have any ideas, let me know what you think. But uh, I'm thinking maybe a uh, red maple. I don't know. Maybe I'll pop up another fruit tree out here. I don't know. But anyway, the neighbor's cows are all over here because they're very curious what I'm doing. And Missy Rumor was just playing with them and it was adorable and I missed it and I'm sorry, but hopefully it'll happen again. Um, so basically I'll explain what I know about rotational grazing. I'm new to it. I just started on this property. But basically rotational grazing is moving your animals in such a way that you are not leaving them uh, for you're not letting them graze the ground all the way down to the ground you're letting them graze the ground to you know the perfect height uh, which I'm not going to even quote what that height is because I'm not positive um, but I usually let like I'll let velvet in stay in one of these for a week and it's hard to tell what they are but basically if you look if you look in between this row and that row, this is one week width of her paddock and it goes, you know, the entire the entire length. So this is one half. Now flip you around real slow. And that's the other half to the back of the trailers. So that that is her paddock for you know, those two halves is her paddock for the week. And you can see there's, so there's this stake right here, and then there's that stake up there. And that whole pasture is a pasture for a week. And the first one that she goes in is the, the one that's next. So the one that is, there's that stake right there. And then there's the real fence with the T-posts. Zoom out here for you. And that is her pasture for the first week. So I'm actually standing in the third week's pasture. And it may be longer than a week. Um, just because that pasture is so big. 
uh, and it'll really t depend on the other problem that I had was I have the sheep following her but the sheep's netting requires her electric fence to ho hook it up to and you can see where velvet was so you those buckets over there that black line and blue line those are our potato buckets velvet was next to those in her last pasture so now we're all the way up on the other side of the property and I don't know really what to do as far as I can't leave the sheep over there and put velvet over here because I don't have any way to hook electricity up to their fence without running a whole nother line just for hey easy taken out by my dog. Um, mistake here. One more. Okay. So I need one more for this run here. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to let the sheep run in with the cows for one week. And then as soon as I bump velvet to her second pasture then I'll put the sheep in her first pasture I'll start running the sheep behind her again um, so back to rotational grazing sorry I'm all over the place today uh, like that's unusual so basically you allow the animal to graze down the grass to where it's not overgrazed and then you move them on to the next pasture and you keep rotating them and you don't come back to the first pasture it has to be at least six weeks or the cycle of the parasites that you are dealing with so you know if you have everybody deals with different parasites but in general most parasites are done doing their thing you know as far as the eggs are in the you know laid in the in the poo or whatever and then uh, you know they are in the in the grass the eggs are laid and then they hatch and then you know they, they're on the grass and then they can be digested well if you wait for six weeks at least six weeks before your animal comes back to that pasture then you're really decreasing the chances of your animal reaching eating those ingesting those parasites so it really helps with parasite pressure and it also really helps with just the health of the ground. You're rotating them around your pasture so they're not just pooping in one spot. They're being forced to poop along your entire property and you're not overgrazing the grass. You're allowing the grass to have the proper rest time to where it can grow back. And just a second, let me go to my next run here. And turn the four wheeler off. It's loud. Ooh. Okay, let's see. So that's two. So. Shop, you guys. It's got a roof on the porch. That would be so nice for my clients to be able to sit out there. Uh, I'm gonna have some chairs and a table and of course flowers and they can sit out there with a water or a soda or a tea or coffee which I'm gonna provide um, for them if they so choose and they can just sit out there and watch the animals graze while their dog gets groomed because I'm a long ways away from anything out here so I don't expect people to drive a long ways and then go home and then you know come back so anyway that's just part of the business plan um and so basically the other thing about uh rotational grazing is that you can if you run different species behind different animals it is it's you know it's very beneficial so for instance if you run 
you know, in, in general, the idea of um, rotational grazing is, is you, gr you graze the largest animals first, and then you graze, if you graze cattle, I can't see this is a problem. I can't count and talk. If you graze cattle and um, first, and then, you know, if like an, you run goats or sheep behind them, and then you run chickens behind them, the parasites from the, um, from the cows or the horse, the sheep kill them. They, they run out of their cycle. They, they don't affect the sheep. And then of course the chickens go in and they clean up all the parasites behind the sheep. And then you start over, you know, with the cows. And so therefore all of your parasites are getting basically killed by the other species. So, um, and it all has to do with where the, the parasites are on the, on the blade of grass. And there's, you can get really scientific about it. And I don't know enough to get that scientific about it. I'm not gonna, I don't want people, you know, taking advice and misinformation from me uh, because I'm just spitting out stuff that I don't really know. What I can tell you is um, Joel Salatin, does an amazing job at explaining it. He is really, really good. Um, and also, if you want someone younger and another really great homesteader to watch, uh, Justin Rhodes does rotational grazing um, and he knows quite a bit about it. Two, four. And, um, so basically that's what I know. I just know that I'm running my horse first and then my sheep over the top of what the horse has grazed and then the chickens over the top of what the sheep have grazed. And we'll just work our way all the way down to the garden and then we'll start all over again. Same way we're doing right here. And I'm really excited to get the chickens. Uh, being a part of, you know, this protocol, uh, I get them grazing out on pasture, which I'm really excited about that. So that's what I'm doing tonight, you guys. I'm going to put you back in my pocket because now I'm down to, oh, I was going to tell you more about these. So these um, fence posts. Uh, they're wonderful if you use electrical tape, and I do use electrical tape for my horse. And they're super easy to slip the tape through here, and they they stomp in. So let's see, I'm going to take this one out. So they've got a stake on the end of them, right? And then you just basically put it where you want it, and you step it in. And it's super easy. Um, it's way better than the hammer and these old fiberglass rods that give you slivers and meh. Um, you can find them. I found the purple ones at Tractor Supply. I do have three white ones in the line and I got those at Home Depot. And I think they're like $3, two or $3 a piece. Um, and I love them. They're so easy. They're so much better than these pain in the butt, you know, stakes and then you got to buy the insulators and the insulators you know start slipping on them and so anyway that's what i'm doing i'm gonna get back to work oh look at that she found something hey quit making ankle breakers in the pasture Quit making ankle breakers in the pasture. I think I just got flipped off by a chihuahua. Well, I just came over here. This is the uh, Autumn Blaze maple that I 
thought was dead and I just I came over here because I'm I've got a steak that I needed and check that out you guys the autumn blaze is coming back albeit from suckers but I'll take it because this thing is I mean dead so I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna leave the tree in the spot for now because it just keeps us from mowing over it while the little one's little. And I'm gonna let that grow up and... Hey, don't eat that! Goodness gracious, it's just a baby. So that's really exciting. My Autumn Blaze Maple is back! Um, so I got to the end of the line here and needed one more steak, so I'm gonna put that one in. Alright, let's see if I can do this. Is she gonna fail? Yes, looks like she is. Exciting news. We got taters. Look at them. They're coming up in a lot of the buckets. There's two. And these are red Pontiacs on both sides. There's three buckets. Three buckets of red Pontiac. Four buckets of red Pontiac coming up. Five buckets of red Pontiac. Looks like there's a Right there. Six buckets of red Pontiac. Seven buckets of red Pontiac. Nothing from the Yukons yet. Nothing from the Russet yet. Like there's some Kennebec coming up there and there. And more Kennebec coming up here. Some over there. And more Kennebec there. And looks like that's it so far. There's a little update on potatoes. That's exciting. We got baby potatoes. Okay, so now what I've done is I've ran a center line all the way up the front. And this is like my front side of my pastures. Now, it's not a straight line because I went around the parking area for the trailers and the chicken coop. But this is my center line. This is where my electricity will come from. And it goes all the way to the box uh, right over here. And so there's the electricity box. There's a solar panel hot wire. And I'm coming over here to get, I got my cute little setup back. I'm excited about that. All right, um, I'm grabbing my gates. Uh, I've only got two at the moment. I have another one in the feed room if I need it, but I'm just gonna run two for now. And then we'll go from there, but so as you can see, here's my, that's where my electricity comes from. And then I've run one line all the way across with it. And now I'll just run my dividing uh, lines for my separate pastures. And you can see I've got one pasture, two pastures, three pastures, 
four pastures. So this is um, at least a month's worth of grazing right here, done. So it does take me a long time to do it, um, but I only have, if I only have to do it once a month, yeah, I spend, you know, two, three hours out here doing it. But I'm, I mean, I'm making videos and I'm watching my dogs and I'm enjoying the farm. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just kind of monotonous work and um, it's very soothing to me. So um, it's not a big deal. I kind of enjoy it. So, okay, I'm gonna start my first gate here, right here. Beautiful sunset. Oh my, you guys. Look at that sunset. Woo! It's a beauty. Look at that. Wow. Oh goodness. Okay. Well, I've been fighting with these um, bushes a little bit. Like I said, they're pointy, sticky, and so I brought my pruners out with me and I've been whacking away, but I got one, um, one line. So there is one pasture completed. Now I'm running the second line, but I just had to stop and take a picture of that. Wow. Show you guys how easy this is. down to the little, the old-fashioned ones. The uh, oak trees are budding and flushing out again. Beautiful little piece of green. I'm pulling, this is what I'm doing you guys, I'm pulling with one hand. I've got a roll that I'm dragging behind me and videoing with the other. Okay, I'm gonna get this run done and be right back. All right, Missy Velvet's pans are out and her pastures are ready for tomorrow. Missy Rescue, I'm coming, love. She's like, geez, Mom, why are you always working till dark? <laughs> well, because I get carried away, that's why. Okay, I'm just taking my supplies back to the garage. I can't believe I had enough fencing to do four runs. And... That's going to do it for today, you guys. So thank you for coming along with me while I rearranged uh, all of the uh, kids' pastures and got their pastures ready for another four weeks of being out and grazing. I sure hope that you had a beautiful day, and I will catch you on the next one. Yours truly.